Hi guys, welcome back to the new James Bond show with Crazy Kajibi. I'm your host with no fears, limits, or substitutes. And if you're new to the channel, please consider smashing that subscribe button and hello to ya. I'm the bad boy of James Bond because I see it and I say it. Okay, as you guys know, or if you're new to the channel, I've been doing a lot of toys lately, James Bond toys, showing parts from my collection. And I have promised you guys that I would do uh, an episode on the Big Chief range where I'd have them all together, at least in sets of three together like this. So this is the Gold Finger range of the Big Chief dolls. And in the next session of this, next episode of doing the dolls, I will do the Live and Let Die range. They're pretty much just behind there. Now, before I get into all this stuff and these dolls, I will give you guys an, ep an update and for the collectors that are really into the Big Chief range and those thinking about getting into this range of dolls there is bad news once again the so Big Chief their third series is the Dr. No series and with the Dr. No series instead of doing three dolls like they did with Goldfinger and Live and Let Die Unfortunately for Dr. No, they're only doing the two, which is Dr. No and uh, Sean Connery, James Bond, in the Midnight Blue tuxedo. So they're just doing those two. I would have absolutely loved a Felix Leiter or an M or Honey Rider. I think with Honey Rider, though, uh, I don't think they would have gone with the bikini. It would have been iconic and classic, but there's... I don't know how much you can charge for that or how much you can get away with the plastic body showing her in a bikini. Though I have seen some dolls of that like on eBay for sale and the body work on women is getting better and better these days. So, you know, who knows? But that's what I would have liked to have seen. And, or even Quarrel. But would they see Quarrel as a big enough of a seller? But I think to the real Bond fans, they would have. So I'm going to bring this slightly closer, guys. I'm going to be real careful here. So we've got Harold Sakata as Oddjob. We've got Gert Froba as Doric Goldfinger. And, of course, the one, the only, Sean Connery. I'm just going to move this slightly, guys. Sean Connery as James Bond. I'm just going to put him back. He's poking. He's probably going to poke me in the eye with that. So... Each doll came with a whole bunch of things. And just one more thing, guys. Yes, I call them dolls. I don't call them figures. Figures, and I will fight anyone to the death on this. Figures are plastic figurines. And the word figures, figurine, was basically invented to try and get teenage boys back in the 70s and especially around the Star Wars era and I think mainly with Action Man and all that it was trying to get teenage boys into collecting the dolls aka fi figures so they called them figures but to me action figures are plastic I'm happy to call Star Wars figures like that came out in the late 70s early 80s I'm happy to call them figures figurines they're plastic a doll is something, yes, the base section obviously is plastic, but a doll to me has material, has clothes. It's not just a plastic figure that's pretty much plastic for 100% of it. And there's so much articulation and design in these, to me, it kind of cheapens them by calling them figurines. So to me, especially at a 1-6 scale, these, these are dolls. Now... Okay, I'm going to be very honest about this. I believe if you are going to buy any of the Big Chief range, you go through go through Sideshow. I just think they're probably better covered with insurance. Um, their customer service at Sideshow is so good. is really, really good. Guys, again, I'm just going to move this slightly. So sorry. I just want to make sure that it, you've got a better angle on them. Um... So yeah, I'd be going through Sideshow. Their customer service is absolutely fantastic. And of course, if you go through Sideshow also, you get Sideshow rewards as well, which you can put to if you collect other 1-6 dolls, not just the James Bond range, whether you want Spider-Man, Star Wars, etc. 
you can put those points into those other items as well. Also, the delivery with the sideshow um, range, or the sideshow, going through sideshow with the Big Chief range, has been fantastic. As soon as they're shipped out, they're literally uh, from America to my door here uh, in Australia. <laughs> they're here in like, seriously, like five days. <laughs> that that quick, it's crazy. Five, six days, six days tops. They're here, so it's pretty, yeah, pretty awesome. The next range, I'm going to talk about these guys in a minute, but I just want to rattle off a bit more because I'm actually really passionate about any 1-6 uh, James Bond style doll. And the reason, I'll just say this, guys, the reason I love James Bond dolls, probably over, you know, you can have prop replicas and they can look great and be awesome. But when you walk into a room and you have a cabinet like this and it's all lit up nice and you see the dolls especially together, it just brings the films to life in a crazy way because you've got these, you know, little small scale Bond characters and, you know, in their full wardrobe and everything else. So it's so awesome. So let's have a look at this guy. So this is the Sean Connery from Goldfinger. I'm going to bring this nice and close. Now, one thing they did do, uh, these are made in China and I think Big Chief have cheaped out on what they've used as far as the screws. I've had terrible issues with the screws on on these. I'll show you here guys, see if we can see it properly. The screw there, probably can't see it with the bad light. Basically the screw, you put in a screwdriver once, it's literally worn. So I don't know how many times if they're testing them, if they're old ones, if they're cheap, obviously I think maybe they're some cheap screw they're using, but I now can't open that, so I now can't put a screw in to open that. They're not all like that. You might get, seriously, I think I've got like one or two out of three that have worked. Um, so a couple of mine, I can't put the batteries in them. So I'm going to have to go to my local, <laughs> my local hardware store and see if they can help me get those off and get new screws in. But the suiting of, especially the Connery, so this is the suit that where he's wearing where he's walking around in Kentucky, Goldfinger's Ranch in Kentucky, and he gets a little sexy with uh, Pussy Galore in the hay. This is the suit that he wears in those scenes. Now, he's got the Luger gun here. Uh, when you open the box, which I've got just down there, there are other items. He also comes with a, from memory, was it, I think, from memory, a mint, was it a mint julep? He was drinking with Goldfinger in Kentucky, I'm pretty sure it was. And so he comes with that drink as well. I've Ever since I've got these, I've kept them with their same thing. So I've been a little boring. So I think I need to chuck a gold bar in gold in uh, Odd Job's hand. And maybe a mint julep in both of their hand. And uh, you know what I should do too? I should print out like a backdrop. Because these guys are in the same outfits that they actually share a scene with. Where so many other dolls, you don't actually get two or more that we're in the same costumes within the same scene. So what I should do is a printout of like up against Goldfinger's homestead there and get little chairs, even if I make the little chairs on the table, sit them down, have that backdrop and put the mint juleps there. I think that'd be pretty cool. But have a good look guys. You know what I'll do, stuff that. I'm gonna grab the camera, okay? So if anyone suffers from vertigo, now's the time to take your medication. <laughs> All right, we'll come around here and we'll have a look at Sean. So you see the likeness is absolutely fantastic. It's really good. They've done a great job with uh, James Bond here, Sean Connery. Look at that. Pretty awesome. And the suit, the detailing of the suit is absolutely fantastic. And they've even done the pockets. So it's a little difficult to hold this in. They've even done the pockets. You can see there, guys. They've done his pockets and everything. So you can put the hands inside the pockets. We'll have a look at... I'll try and get them... Try and get the three there. So three shot there for you. We'll come in. We'll have a look at Harold Cicado's Odd Job. Now, a lot of people really love the likeness of Odd Job. 
Big shout out too, hello to Matt Muckle, my co-admin, and James Bond fans with love on Facebook. I know Matt loves the Harold Cicada likeness here on this big chief odd job doll. And the tailoring on his suit is really great. It's awesome. I'll just move Bondy back a bit and we'll try and get in closer, guys. I'll move odd job as well. Don't want to upset him, get him to chuck that hat at me. And we'll move it and we'll have a look at Goldfinger. I think they've done a pretty good likeness there of uh, Gert Fober. I think it's really good. And the, the, I mean, look, I, I think they've really picked the right, definitely the right outfit. I mean, the golf, the golf one would have been awesome. But if they were going to do the golf one, you would want them to do uh, Connery in the golf attire he wore as well. So I think, yeah, I think they've really picked the right outfit there. I think they picked the right outfit for them all. Well, they didn't have much choice for a job. He was always in his butler's outfit. So I hope you like that, guys. I'll put this back here. Now, so September is when we're going to have to wait for the Doctor No set, unfortunately, September. Um, that is basically from what I remember and what people have ordered from. It will be, it will be two years for me. So, and it's September to dash December. So they may not even come out until 2022. And the sad thing is, I would have loved them in the collection when No Time to Die comes out. Um, especially for me because I might, um, might actually look at doing this as a bit of a business. So if Office parties, Christmas parties and things can open up. I might actually look at and advertise my James Bond collection to do displays for end of year Christmas parties and office parties. When I was working security, I actually worked, I did a gig. It was so great. I'll tell you a story here, guys. Just great thing about the crazy TV show stories, random stories will always come out from me. So I was doing security in Melbourne at the World Trade Centre, right? So our World Trade Centre here in Melbourne. And I turn up and people are arriving and that, and I see people dressed as, <laughs> this was in 2013, I think, and people are dressed as James Bond characters. And I've gone inside the venue and I'm like, oh, they're putting up all, you know, James Bond stuff and they've got these little James Bond quiz things on the tables. And so one of the women was walking around and she was like one of the organizers of it. And I talked to her and I said, oh, you know, what's going on here? I'm, you know, I'm Steve. I'm um, your security for the night. And what are you doing here? Oh, yeah, it's, it, you know, end of year function. And we're doing a James Bond themed work function. And there was this guy. I'll never forget it. Oh, my goodness. I just remembered another story out of this. I've got to tell you. And so there was this guy. And he was dressed in the full golf attire of Ulrich Goldfinger. And he was a doppelganger of Gert Frober. He looked like Gert Frober. It was like, oh my goodness, I felt like I was on the set of Goldfinger. And I don't know where he got his costume pieces from, but it was to the T. He was dressed exactly like Gert Frober in the Goldfinger golf scenes. And I got talking to him and told him how I'm a big Bond fan and all that. And he won for best dress that night as well. He won. Now, funny story I'm going to tell you. Okay, every word of this is true. At the time I was single, and there's these, there's these two promotional chicks that have showed up. And they actually had, were sprayed in gold paint trying to look like um, Jill Masterson, played by Shirley Eaton in the film. Anyway, so I'm looking at this... One of them particularly, you know, she's blonde and she's got all the spray on. Because I saw them before they went in and got all the spray on. And she was hot. She was really, really hot. I'm like, whew, right? Anyway, had a bit of attitude about her. Now, she didn't know that I was his walking, talking James Bond encyclopedia. I didn't let on. So I've gone down to the door. And I'm down there with another security guard. And we're, you know, people are slowly dribbling in, coming in for the event. And she's down there. And she starts talking to people. And this is what she says. Again, I'll never forget this story for the rest of my life. And again, she's got no idea who I am, right? Like, my love, like, 
two metres standing from it is this guy who just loves and obsessed with James Bond since he was uh, 12 and a half, 13. So she says to these people, oh, yeah, I'm dressed as, as you know, I'm the gold girl from Goldfinger and, um, you know, she actually died. She died during filming and, um, and so I'm listening to this and I'm like, um, in my head, I'm like, um, no, she didn't. <laughs> Shirley Eaton's still very much alive, I'm thinking. So I'm just listening and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm single. <laughs> She's hot. Do I interrupt her? And I was all dressed in a nice suit. I'm like, do I interrupt her and make her look bad, potentially? Or will she take it in the manner it's, you know, or is she going to get shitty with me? So I wasn't sure whether I should say something. And so she's telling, there's two people she's talking to. So she's just filling their head, their head with crap. Complete rubbish. Didn't do her homework on it at all. And I thought, stuff it. Me being me, I've got to say something. So I kind of moved one leg, shuffled over, and I said, oh, excuse me. And the two people she was talking to looked at me, and she looks at me, and I said, um, that's not exactly true. And again, I did not want to make her look bad. How do you think she responded, guys? I'm going to give you a second to think. What do you reckon? Get your thoughts. Do you think she said, oh, really? Could you tell me? Or do you think she said, so you got option A? Oh, really? Oh, could you tell Oh, how do you know? Or, you know, what have you heard? Or option B? Yes, you did. What option are you taking? Well, if you took option B, which was the worst option... That's what she took. And she stuck the chest out, which I was quite happy with because she was hot blonde with a nice rack. So she <laughs> put the chest out and she's like, yes, she did. And I said, um, no, she didn't. And she goes, yes, she did. And then the two people that were there that she was talking to, they're kind of like this. Like, oh, okay, this is getting a little bit embarrassing. And uh, I said, oh, so you're sure she did? Well, well, yeah, that's what I've been told. I said, oh, okay. I said, could you tell me the actress, the name of the actress that played Jill Masterson in Goldfinger? And right at that point, she's like, kind of like, oh, she's a friendship. But, oh, shit. This guy actually knows a little, you know, something about James Bond. And I said, the actress's name is actually, um, I said, it's Shirley Eaton, and she played Jill Masterson in 1964 Goldfinger. And I said, do you want the running time and the name of the director? Boom, now I got a little bit cocky, and guess what? It worked. And suddenly she goes, oh, oh my goodness, like, you know, she's like, oh my goodness, oh, OMG. Oh, you know about James Bond? And I said, yeah, I'm probably um, one of, if not the most knowledgeable James Bond fan in this country. And I said, since a kid, I said, I know all about James Bond. And I said, I can guarantee you that Shirley Eaton is very much alive. And they also did the gold paint on a stunt woman as well. And I said, what you do is you would leave a little patch below the spine free and it allows the body to breathe, etc., etc. Anyway, check this out, guys. So later on, you enjoying this story, Harold? Huh? You just relax here, buddy. So anyway, shut up. So, so anyway, she's upstairs. Oh, I, I kind of just played cool, and then the other two people, they're really interested in what I've got to say, and she now knows not to argue with me on this, and that she felt like a bit of a dick, right? So I played it cool, and go, enjoy, enjoy your night, and you have fun too, and I kind of walked off. About half an hour later, I'm upstairs, and I'm just standing there on my own. She comes up the stairs, she sees me, she walks over to me, and she says, Hi. I said, How you doing? How you doing? And she said, Oh... I actually just want to apologize. And I said, oh, what for? And she said, oh, I didn't mean to be rude to you before. You know, I just heard that the actress had died and yeah, I didn't realize that you were like this big James Bond fan. And I said, it's all right. Not many you know, people do unless I tell them, but I didn't want to embarrass you. I just wanted to tell you the truth that uh, she was alive. So there you go. And no, I didn't end up getting the digits. I didn't ask for the digits. I think I got a little bit um, she was just hot so <laughs> I think I just wussed out but anyway there's my fun story and that's the type of story you probably only get at the James Bond show so if you're new to the channel and you want more 
honest upfront fun videos like this that are just no bullshit and relax guys smash that subscribe button so there you go okay now I'm not ending the video though because I'm gonna tell you a few things about the numbers of these dolls because I've got these lined up so this is the odd job doll packaging okay and I think I think they've done a great job here what I'm gonna do I'm just bear with me guys we're just all chilling out here aren't we so I don't have to edit crap and you don't mind if I move stuff okay so there you go that's a bit better odd job box now what I'm excited about with this piece W7 really nice packaging is so there were more made of bond than there were of I'm just gonna move the camera a bit than there were of odd jobs so there were only 2300 worldwide made of odd job and guess what number I have not a good one no <laughs> <laughs> I lined you up for something exciting. I have number 419. But there's more. All right, you ready, guys? You ready? Uh huh. -huh. Okay, so we're doing Goldfinger. Gorroba. Okay. Similar packaging. Nice picture there of old Goldie. And I love this. I love. You can touch it, it's kind of, you can feel it sticks out, it's awesome. Okay, so how many were made of this guy? What do you reckon, guys? So just like a job, which I think is really smart, because if, if you were going to buy two to put them together, and because these were, they are very expensive, so if you were going to buy two and put them together, why not have these two together? So there were 2,300 made of him, and guess what number I have, guys? I do on this one. I tricked you before, but I've got a very, very low number. So out of 2,300 made worldwide, I have number 32. So if you can't see, if it's not too light. So just take my word for it, people. <laughs> number 32. That's why they call me crazy. Okay. So we've got the Sean Connery man. Bond. James Bond. Again, great packaging. Great packaging. Now, let's see how many. So remember, 2,300 made of these two. Now, Mr. Bond, they made 4,300. Wow. So 2,000 more of the Mac Daddy Bond here. And I have a number out of 4,300. I have the very unlow, <laughs> unlow number of number nine. 160 unfortunately on that so that's the three that's the three boxes now odd job also came with the little statue head and they came with background pieces as well I'm just thinking if I've put them in the box or if I've actually got if I've actually got them in my collectors cabinets I I'm one of these collectors that I do like to take things out of the box because I'm a sticky nose. <laughs> I like to play with them. You know, when, when you guys are watching, I'm like, Oh, did you see pussy? Oh, oh, oh. But I did. I saw her pushy and I saw her a big shut up, you, you naughty. So, <laughs> yeah, I do, guys. I'm, I play with my dollies. All right, I admit it. So he gets the backdrop of Stoke Poachers where they filmed... The statue head chopping off. Goldilocks here, he got the background of his lair where he's explaining right before he gasses everyone for no reason. Uh, so he gets that lair. And yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I think they could have done a better one for Bond. They basically did so underground, pretty much underground of <laughs> where they did his backdrop underground in the lair kind of where he gets put in prison there that hallway they did that backdrop that here or that there Ooh, can't get my words out for connery for james bond so i should bring these forward again guys oh. so yeah i was a little i don't know i think what they could have done maybe was the outside where he's having the mint julep i think that would have been a lot better so guys that's what i've got for you on this video Goldfinger range, 
Big Chief Dolls, if you've got any questions or anything you think I've bypassed, let me know in the comments below. And let me know what you think of these, these dolls. And um, would you pay for them? And I think from memory, I think you're looking at around 270 USD. I have to check that, but I think that's what I paid for them. And look, I'm going to get them all. I just, I love them. I am going to get them all. I'm going to keep getting them only through Sideshow. I'm not going to go through Big Chief. I'm going to go through Sideshow for sure. And I think the delays, I don't think the pandemic can be blamed for the delays at all. Um, I don't know what's happened there, but they're made in China. might be part of the reason. Uh, they've done an incredible job with the head paint sculpts. Maybe a few, I think some of the sculpt painting could be a little bit better. You can see the top of Harold Sakata's head there. Uh, and there's even little patches on the back of Bond's head that could probably be, well, could be a little bit better. But overall, they're a fantastic doll, and I hope the delay... I hope these constant delays by Big Chief aren't going to stop fans ordering and, and buying them. Um, and more than anything, I don't know how long the contracts run out with Big Chief, between Big Chief and Eon. I know Barbara Broccoli has final say. She's got final say on the doll. So Big Chief deal with the marketing people of Eon and Barbara Broccoli herself. I know that for a fact. And she has final say. Now, also what I do know and can tell you is that the head dudes down at Big Chief, they wanted to make the Living Daylights Dalton in fatigues, black fatigues from the pre-title sequence. That's what their plan was. Barbara Broccoli boohooed it and said no to it. She wanted a Dalton in black tuxedo for the Living Daylights. Now, what I've seen recently is or a few months ago now, is plan work for the Dalton Big Chief doll, but he's a hybrid. From what I know, and I could be wrong here, but what I've seen is he's definitely a hybrid. Whether that was plans they're going to change, I'm not 100% sure, and I'll explain how he's a hybrid. Well, he looks like Dalton from The Living Daylights, right? Now, I'm hoping he then comes with two heads because his head is 100% Dalton from the Living Daylights, you know, the nice hair and all that. Where, But he comes with the special Q branch camera gun from License to Kill um, with the palm reader. So he's coming with that. So that's a License to Kill product gadget with a Living Daylights Dalton, so if the... Uh, oh, look, guys. He just came on. I just touched the side. I forgot I had batteries there in that one. See? His little, and then he just went off. See, try and get it back on again. See, that's the thing, too. What I wanted to tell you about, too, guys, is these are a little bit fidgety, a bit finicky. Normally, when you put them down, then they work. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I think I was touching it on the wrong side. That's what the ladies say all the time to me. <laughs> You're touching it on the wrong side, Kajimi. <laughs> anyway, um, I've totally put myself off now. So, yeah, with the Dalton one, look, I think it's kind of an awesome idea that he does come with that, uh, with the uh, palm reading gun, the camera gun, but it's got to come with two heads. Surely it's got to, and two heads are better than one. <laughs> that was rude. But um, it's definitely got to come with two head sculpts. They've got to do a head sculpt. And that might be why they're taking much longer and that they've changed the plans on it. Might be why they're taking longer with that range because I haven't seen much news about it. And that could, I don't know, maybe that could affect the Dr. No range as well. So, guys, that's all I've got for you in this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like. Please, guys, right now, just drop a like. Helps the video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of all this. And the more you guys like the videos, the more you guys comment, the more I'm going to make them. If you don't, well, I'm just going to end up going... Walking away, not making them. So, let me know if you love them. I'm not going to make them for ghosts, so if you guys like these videos, drop a like. And let me know in the comments below. Okay, guys. Take care. Keep on bonding. And 
say hi to your mum for me. And remember, my body, my choice. Don't take the diff, Jeff.